Hi, I'm going to do a quick eBracket demo, first from the point of view of an administrator. First I need to log in, click on Turning Admins, and my login information is already there, but if it's not, you just enter yours. When that comes up, I get my list of tournaments that I have previously created. I want to create a new one, so I'm going to click on the Create New button. It's going to bring up a wizard that I just need to fill in all the information for my tournament. The name, the sport, plenty to pick from, I don't know which one you are looking for, um, the start and end date, and then a time range for each um, of your matches. It could be an hour, it could be an hour and 15, it could be two hours, or whatever you need. Then information about um, the administrator that people can see on the website, if you'd like to make that public or not, and then adding your locations. You have a choice of just typing in the name and having it come up and the address will populate, or you can go to a previously used list if you have locations that you've previously used in the past. You can just select it and it'll remember it and populate it on its own. Then for this uh, location, you need to enter um, the course that you have. And then the times that the courts are valid. And then just some other information about the um, location. So if you wanted to add another location, you just click on Add New Venue, and you could keep adding locations if you had multiple locations. Um, I'm just going to leave it as the one for now. And this is your first group. This is um, basically the group of teams that you're going to have um, for this tournament. And you'll be able to create different groups um, um, as you as you go on. So here's the seventh grade girls group that I just added. If I needed to add um, other groups, I just do that here. But I'm going to keep with the seventh grade girls at first, and the first thing uh, I need to do is add teams. Um, I'm just going to add six teams for this tournament. And once I have the teams added, now I can create a pool or a bracket. Now it depends on my format. I could just create a bracket if I knew I just wanted a 16 bracket of some sort, or if I want to start out with pool play and then go into brackets. Um, if you want to create a bracket, you don't see the format of your bracket available. Um, you can just ask us and we can create that template for you. I'm going to start out by creating a pool. The pool name. And I'm only going to have three teams in this pool. And I'm going to have it create two games um, for this pool. I have options to adjust this. Um, based on whatever I needed. If I had a pool of 10 teams, I could have it create you know, three games or four games or whatever I would need, so that's adjustable. So now what I need to do is just select where I, where I want eBracket to create uh, the matchups for this pool. Um, I could pick different venues if I had, uh, had multiple, but I only have one, so I'll just leave it as all. I can pick on certain days, or if I just wanted games on Sunday, I would do that. Uh, at this point, it's just my first pass, so I'm going to leave it all selected. But I just need to select the teams that are in this pool, so I'm just going to select my first three teams um, for this pool and click on Finish. And again, eBracket is just going to take a guess at when these games should be. Um, I have the ability to go in and edit all of these. Here I can edit the the date and time if I wanted to change it to a to, to a later date uh, you know I can just change the time um, that's up to I guess that's up to me and if I also wanted to change uh, the teams now again changing pool there's some uh, some catches here but you can also change the pool um, teams you want would want to stay within your pool if you change it to pool E that's going to kind of it's going to goof things up so you really only want to stay within your pool you do you do have that option 
Um, and when it co does come time to enter the score, this is where you would enter the score as well, but I'll get to that. So here's where you can change uh, the time and location. For the sake of speed, um, I'm not going to change all of them right now. I just wanted to show you that that was available there. Um, I am going to go in and um, create another pool. Let's make pool B. And I'm going to add my other three teams. It's the same exact process. see my matchups right there. The other thing I want to show you quick is that I need to select tiebreakers for these pools. Um, so I'm going to select whatever ones I want um, to be my tiebreakers. Um, you'll see here that there, if you select a first half or a second half points uh, against it, the, the system will require you to add a halftime score. You can't enter a final until you have a halftime because we can't calculate a halftime score unless we have it. So um, just a note on that. So I'm not going to pick a halftime score. I'm just going to do a point differential and a final score. Um, and then I'm just going to click back in my sections here, and you'll see now here my summary has those tiebreakers uh, listed here. So as games are played, this will populate. Um, but now that I have my pools, and again, I'm not going to worry about my times and locations. I have my pools. I want to create uh, a bracket, uh, a simple bracket. I'll call it championship bracket have it only play on Sunday and here's where I have the different options I have a single elimination double elimination different formats different types of brackets I'm going to stick with single elimination but since I have um, six teams I'm going to um, pick the 16 bracket and I'm going to have a third place game option so make sure you look for your options here as well and here you can see what one you're trying to populate I am going to pick pool individual and what this allows me, since I have two pools, you'll see both pools as an option. If I selected pool and bracket combined, now I don't have any brackets, but I do have two different pools. So what it would do here is it would rate them one through six. It would combine all the results and put the teams in one list. This is used quite often. Um, again, this is figured out by eBracket based on your tiebreakers that you selected. So either one is is fine, but this will combine them together. I'm just going to stick with a regular pool, and I'm just going to select Pool A first place, and just click on Next. And then I'm going to continue with Pool Individual because that's what I had selected. And now for this one, I'm going to pick um, Pool A third place versus Pool B second place, and so on. Now you can see that I have my bracket set up, which is based on my pool results. These labels here I can change as well. By default it does first through fourth, which is what I want here. If I go back to Tournament Home, um, if I wanted to look at my schedule overall, I can see there's a grid here that will show the matchups just to make sure I don't have any overlaps. Now again, I haven't put any time and effort into making sure these are fine, but here you can see if there's overlaps and if there's issues that you have you have within your scheduling. If I want to look at Sunday, it would be the same type of thing. The other thing I wanted to show you quick is if I went in, for and if for some reason this doesn't make sense in this case, but if I wanted to create another bracket, I can do that. And I'm just going to click on Next. And now you have other options here as well because now I have a bracket that's available. I could pick that bracket and take the result of that bracket and put it into another bracket or into another pool. So there's a lot of options to link, and there's really not anything. There's really nothing you can't do, um, and it, it just makes it really flexible for whatever type of tournament format you have. So I'm just going to click on cancel. I don't really want to create that bracket. I just want to show you that there's other bracket options in there. Um, 
And so that that's really it. Now, if I, I would keep going, I have eighth grade girls. I'd have to enter those teams and, and kind of do the same thing for the eighth grade girls format. Again, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to leave it at seventh grade girls. And if I want to share this with people, now I need to publish it. Um, so um, I would just come in here, and I have plenty of credits. If you don't if you don't have enough credits you would have to purchase them at this point so you could publish your tournament again it's only a dollar a team and to um, purchase credits you would just click on this and it'll take you to the purchase um, process for you to do that but I'm just going to publish the seventh grade girls team which now means it's available to every for everyone to see if I wanted to share this on Facebook or make it more public um, I can um, I can do that um, now even though it's published now, I can still come in here and I can make changes. I could go back into my general changes, I could change my tournament name, I can do whatever I want. Some changes will just automatically happen, other changes are big enough. Like if I got rid of Pool A, um, it would it would unpublish my tournament automatically and give me my credits back and then wait for me to finish and then I would have to go republish. But you would see that here, there would be that little red circle for you to publish your tournament again. Um, if you want to send messages to your tournament, you can come in here and send messages and it will shoot out messages to the app and to the website, letting people know like if you have a rain delay or a snowstorm or whatever it would be, you can let them know. Um, same with marketing. you have If you want to share this with someone, you can copy this URL and this will allow people to come and view, view the tournament um, as well, uh, along with some printed material that you can um, use. So that's really it from an administrator standpoint. Um, you've kind of done everything you needed to. Um, now from a user standpoint, we will want to go and view this tournament. And so you can see by default because of where I am, it shows up in today's tournaments. If it didn't show up here for me or if I'm from out of town or not in the area, I may have to search for it here and then it would come up in the list. But since it's right here, um, I want to just view this tournament and you can see the interface is a bit different for a viewer than an administrator but again it's everything that you need to know so you can see the pools that we created and the brackets we created uh, if you feel like you need to comment about it you can um, that everyone can see um, but the completed games would be listed under here you need to click on the, the the bar and upcoming will show all the scheduled games that are upcoming if I click on a team name say I'm part of team A click on them and they, it will show me, it will highlight in yellow where they are. Um, so really that that's that's really it on the website. Now all of this is available through the mobile app as well, both Android and Apple, and that's what I recommend using when you're um, at your tournament. It's, it's much, much, I don't want to say easier because this is very easy too, but that's what it's meant for. You just have it on your phone um, and it is it is really, really simple to track your team and see how you're doing. I'm going to go back as an administrator here quick and I'm just going to enter a score. So I'm going to enter a score for this first matchup and because it's now published my default page, my default tab here is now the scores because as a published tournament the assumption is that I'm next thing I'm going to do is enter a score. Um, so I'm just going to do that here quick um, and save it. And you'll see now that this grid populates. Uh, it shows the score here, it shows the summary and what, the, what that looks like. If I come over to here and I just do a refresh, I can see now that that game is right here. If I look under completed games, well, there's that score. And here's the summary for that pool. Again, as you enter more scores, this will continually update as scores get updated. Uh, I just want to reiterate too that as a viewer, again, the app is where you would want to go. But even as an administrator, on game day, entering scores through the app is really easy. You can just, again, log into the app, enter the scores through the app. Um, it's just score, score click on save and then it updates it automatically. You can either even make minor changes um, to your schedule, like if you needed to move a game time or location, you can also do that through the app. Um, but if you have big changes, you'd have to come back to the website. Um, but that's really it in a nutshell. I'm just gonna stop right there instead of entering all of the scores. Um, 
but you get the idea just from a demo purpose. I think that it's, it's done its job here. So uh, good luck and enjoy your tournament.